very short lecture, RNA processing. What we're going to find out here is how we uh, eukaryotic cells are going to process RNA. We have just come off of um, making a strand of RNA. It is not yet mRNA. It is just RNA. That RNA um, has been let loose. Sigma factor goes off. Uh, the RNA polymerase is getting ready to bind back up with it for some other gene. We've got a piece of RNA. That RNA now needs to be modified so that it can be read by ribosomes in a few minutes. In order to be modified, it goes to the spliceosome. The spliceosome is a series of enzymes that will splice it. What does it mean to splice something? <laughs> Thanks. It's to splice means to splice. Um, you take two pieces and you put them together, the similar pieces, and put them together. Uh, mRNA moves from its brief rela relationship with the RNA polymerase. It needs to visit the spliceosome, um, where you're going to remove the introns, or the intervening regions, and splice together the expressed regions, or the exons. So introns are intervening regions. Exons are expressed regions. If you look up here, we've got exon, intron, exon, intron, exon, intron. All of the introns are pulled out, and the exons are glued together. They're spliced together. This allows for one strand of DNA to encode for a long strand of RNA, but that RNA can encode for many, many different proteins, but through alternative splicing. So we take out all of this filler stuff. We put all the good stuff together. Then we're going to add a polyadenyl tail to one side, poly A, lots and lots and lots of adenine. And on the other side, you're going to add a guanosine cap. That a, these A's, lots and lots of A's, are going to serve as an aglet. Do you guys remember what an aglet is? Sort of like the end of your shoelace? Right. Pa the plastic piece, yeah. So that stabilizes the RNA. RNA is single-stranded. It's always unwinding. But by having a poly A tail, that RNA can exist for longer. On the other side, we've got a cap. <laughs> this, is, this is me posing. Um, we've got a cap. That guanosine cap is there to say it's like your ticket out of the nucleus. Remember, all this is happening in the nucleus. So you've got to escape. What's the only way out of the nucleus? The membrane. And you have to go through what? The nuclear pore. So you go out the nuclear pore only if you have a hat, this guanosine cap. It's the golden ticket out. So you got your ticket, you got your tail, and you're leaving. And you're nice and small now, too. Well, that was a super short lecture, wasn't it? Um, we talked about RNA modifications. So we're going to, this is post-transcriptional, so after the RNA has been transcribed, you're going to have alterations to the RNA molecule itself. Those modifications play a role in regulating gene expression and RNA function. So the ones we discussed were things like adding a poly A tail. And the poly A tail is like a fuse. It um, keeps the RNA stable while, for a little while while it's out in the, um, in the cytosol. We also talked about splicing introns and exons. So the um, introns are removed from the RNA. The exons are spliced together. The introns are the intervening reason, regions, and the exons are the expressed regions. So you remove the introns, put the exons together, and boom, uh, you've got a polyadenyl tail. You've also got a, like a guanosine or a methionine cap. Um, the now mRNA can leave the nucleus through the nuclear pore and move to the ribosome for translation. These content review questions are here to focus your studies. Um, in the next mini lecture, we're going to talk about what happens to that mRNA after it leaves the nucleus. Specifically, it's going to bind to a ribosome and begin to produce a polypeptide. So we'll talk about the genetic code, how it was cracked, and um, how you can get an amino acid sequence from a nucleotide sequence. So that's coming up next.